Hello, everyone. Welcome to Elevating Your Life. So happy to have you joining me once again. Today, we have with us a fantastic guest. We have Michelle Carpenter. She works multidimensionally. She works with her body, mind, heart, and soul energy. She is a passionate, enthusiastic, caring, kind, and often hilarious human being who loves music, dancing, being outside, hanging out with family and friends. She is curious, compassionate, authentic, down to earth, and sometimes pretty silly. Her purpose in this world is to facilitate people on their journey of healing, guiding her clients to go back into their heart space. I am so happy to have you on the show today, Michelle. This is gonna be great, thank you. Thank you for, for those. It's so interesting because I wrote those words and I'm like, Emma, Emma, all those things. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, when you have a moment, you go, really? Did I actually write that? <laughs> but thank you for having me here. Oh, it's you're really, so really welcome. Special. You're thank so you. welcome. <laughs> Michelle and I were previous guests on uh, a great show with Michael Andre Ford. Uh, that's how we met. And I was like, I have to have Michelle on the show. You have to join me, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you for the invite. It was really, really special. And I do, I feel so honored to be here. And, um, you know, the, these connections that we have are just, I think, more about what life's about, isn't it? You know, it just showing is. us that we mean to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our entire lives, it's like who we randomly, who we connect with. I, I believe it's just kind of meant to be. Well, share with everyone a bit more of your background, possibly, and kind of what triggered you to do the work that you're doing today. Okay, so um, I'll keep it as short as I possibly can, because my story um, is really what sort of propelled me into doing the work that I do today. Uh, a big part of my life was uh, in, in, in what I um, have worked through is a huge amount of trauma and a huge amount of grieving and a huge amount of chaos and a huge amount of working with my my, my, my nervous system. Uh, so I was born in Zimbabwe. My dad was a Rhodesian soldier. Um, my parents were young when they had myself and my oldest brother. And um, in 1981, uh, the government took over and we basically fled to South Africa. And unbeknownst to me, um, you know, until I became a teenager, in Zimbabwe, where I was born, uh, I was sexually abused by my mother's younger brother. And I didn't know until I was a teenager that that was something that was wrong. You know, I just thought it was kind of the norm. Um, I came from um, a dancing background, so I had bulimia for many, many years. Um, I didn't have the typical ballerina body, so that came with a lot of self-hatred. Uh, my dad, being uh, an ex rhodesian soldier, uh, he had a lot of his own uh, trauma himself and also growing up in, in the way that he had grown up. Uh, and I, I didn't realize that this was all kind of what we take on, you know, as, as young humans. And I then lost my best friend at the age of 16. I had went from one relationship to the next out of school. My dad had had affairs when I was young and all I was doing was seeking for love. And then I had a very big big experience in my life. I was a sales rep and I was driving and I looked down and I put a straw into a cool drink and um, I was on my side of the road and a young girl had run across the road and we collided. And it was, a, I believe, um, when I've done past life therapy or hypnosis on my, um, that I've had therapy, you know, um, somebody working on me, that this was a sole contract that we had. Um, but it devastated me but all I did was suck it up and I just kept pushing through nobody at the time I was 24 nobody at the time said to me Michelle it's really important that you go for counseling or follow up or it was just like just continue through life and my body started showing me massive symptoms of um, I want to say rejection uh, there was a lot of pain migraines bronchitis tonsillitis in growing up and I was going through life just wanting to be loved you know so um, my mom was was a beautiful strong woman but a very angry woman and she projected a lot of her anger onto myself and my oldest brother 
and you know she also would drink every now and again and then the anger would come out even worse my dad I came to realize had a big drinking problem for many many years and has forgotten the the hurt that had come up you know when 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 stuff was mentioned or when he was you know un under the influence so those life events played havoc in my world and my mind and my heart and I really just blocked life I just blocked I was like I just was angry all the time I'd had a few car accidents besides this massive big one fast forward to when I was 31 32 years old um, I was married had a little baby girl with my ex-husband and uh, we found out that he was having an affair so these patterns were kind of repeating themselves and I decided that I was not going to stay with him and my mom and dad begged me and they're like well we've been through this and we've made it work and I'm like no I, I need to do something different so I started taking responsibility for myself and I went to go see a clairvoyant and this is what's so funny is how we get guided by spirit. I went to go see a clairvoyant. He's like, eh, you just don't love yourself. And I'm like, dude, help me with my anger. <laughs> like I cannot stand men. <laughs> and um, so he said, suggested to me to go on a, a retreat, a hospice um, retreat for the weekend. And it was amazing. I met the most incredible facilitators. And it was nine years later after I'd knocked over and killed this young girl. And um, the woman got me, the facilitator got me to feel how I felt about knocking over and taking a life. And I was devastated. I mean, my head felt like it had split open and they couldn't stop me from crying. And she was holding me and they basically had to put me to bed. Um, but it was the first time that I realized how much I'd suppressed all these mixed emotions. And, you know, my, 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 my theme was the more stressed I am, the more I can cope in life. <laughs> Who says that to yourself? But when you don't know different, you just don't know different. But then I realized that I wasn't doing good for myself or for my baby girl going through divorce. And, and this kind of, not kind of, but it projected me into the realization that I had a lot of work to do on myself. And the trauma and the tragedies that I carried in my body, in my cellular being, in my mind, everywhere I was just consumed and I couldn't focus on being happy. I couldn't focus on any joy. And I wore many different masks as we do as sales reps, because you know, you just got to put on the brave face. And um, every time you're seeing a different client, like we, like I would cry and then in the, in the car, I'd wipe my makeup and say, okay, I'm, I've got this, I can breathe, I can, I can do this. And then I realized they would, I was just being false to myself. And um, I went on different courses and learned that I had a lot of healing to do, a lot of forgiveness to do. And then the facilitator from this hospice weekend became my counselor. And that's when she started helping me work through my sexual abuse as a young girl at the age of four or five. And I was like, what? This was a, I thought this was just the norm, you know, and, and it clearly wasn't. So fast forward to where I am today, uh, we've, we immigrated from South Africa in 2016 to the beautiful country of New Zealand. And that brought, the immigration brought up a whole bunch of different um, emotions. And I hit a depression. And I'd, I'd been working on myself for 15 years. So, you know, by the time we got here, I kind of thought I had my funk together. I thought I've got this, like I've done a lot of work. I've done a yoga teacher training and channeling and I work as a medium. And no, you know, what you haven't worked with just kind of follows you. <laughs> and my husband and I had to really work really hard on our marriage and I, and I did, I hit rock bottom. And I came to realize that living in New Zealand, that living in South Africa in the last 20 years of my life, um, we'd had uh, uh, quite a few uh, horrible situations happen. Um, you know, people breaking into our house, having an armed robbery, my daughter being in a hijacking, just stuff that has happened. And I didn't realize that we had had PTSD. So I came to understand there was more work to be done. Um, for me and my nervous system and New Zealand has helped us to you know regulate and find the calm space inside of us and uh, it's kind of just excelled me into the work that I really was doing in South Africa which is working with loved ones who have passed over um, I started off as a counselor I was working part-time for hospice uh, and you know the universe they say has a wonderful sense of humor and Going back to how I was working with anger, my very first patient or client that I was working with at hospice was a young, young, young gentleman of 24 years old who just got married and he had liver cancer. 
And I say the universe has a sense of humor because it was heartbreaking, you know, but our liver holds on to anger and resentment. And, and that's what I've come to realize, like every part of our organs, st our organs, they store that, you know, we have memory, we have cellular memory, the intergenerational trauma that I was storing. A lot of it I didn't even realize was the projections of what my mom had felt or what my dad had felt. And then there's the ancestral trauma that comes with it too. So I've dug really deep, I keep working hard on myself, but it's got me to a place of realization that our heart is where we store everything and we've got to come back to our heart space and it's activating the heart is the most important thing for me you know so when I see tears with a client Paula I feel so incredibly blessed in that moment you know whether it's a male female you know children we cry and I was allowed to cry but then I wasn't allowed to cry at certain stages you know we were, I grew up in an era where we were told stop crying stop crying so I suppressed a lot of that but then my body started acting out and um, coming to New Zealand was a different part of my evolution letting go of so much of what I'd come to grow up and love as being a South African and I and I it's still very much a big part of who I am and uh, but this country has kind of gone okay Michelle we need to we need to escalate your growth and I met a beautiful friend who started to uh, talk about the Galactic Federation of Light and I was like what who are they and I started doing some more research and it was I needed to elevate my consciousness and my frequency and and I didn't even understand what that meant but the beauty of just letting go and letting life happen for us and and I say this with absolute um, openness. I was a victim of my circumstances for a very, very long time. So I blamed everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say working with the heart for me is so important. Not only just the physical ailments in our body, but, you know, the heart stores. And it's the very first thing that we hear as a mother when we are pregnant is the heart beat. And I don't know about you when you had your, 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 your children, but I had one of those little, I think they're called Dopplers in, in England, where, you know, it's a little thing that they listen to and you hear, and, you know, it's fascinating because it's the first thing that we listen to, or the yes. first thing I listened to when I was pregnant with my daughter. And, and then we come into this world and we just, for me, I just forgot. Life was just so clouded and it just felt chaotic. And there was the good, but there was the equally um, the the chaos and the and the and the, the the like there was just a lot of fighting that my parents um, had got involved in, and no fault of their own. But I was a child that remembered so much of it. My oldest brother said he'd blocked a lot of it, and uh, like I remember waking up at night and hearing them, and I remember things that my mom said. How do you remember this? And I would repeat it to her, and she said, "Well, how do you remember this?" And I'd say, "I, I just do." Uh, so. It's kind of just working with those, a joke, you know, we, we have the, the, the layers of the onion. I feel like I've had pockets and pockets of onions <laughs> and they're all being peeled at once with the amount of tears that I've cried. <laughs> but I know every tear is healing and every tear has got me to opening up and letting go. And that's what I look at life as, is that we either live in a space of contraction we live in a space of expansion and every time we contract the body expands and we let go and we let go and we let go and I'm very honored that over this time of expansion meeting friends who um, channel uh, different beings of light I've now started uh, connecting with angelic beings of light called the Council of Eight and as you mentioned I work very multi-dimensionally so I'm able to you know, connect into the field of the person of the human body and and then um, I'm able to connect with loved ones who have passed over and then when I channel it's Michelle the personality steps aside and then they come through me wow. and uh, and I I'm still able to feel you know like when the information comes through I'm able to feel the heart sensation so uh, let's say if a person's holding on to pain I kind of see it symbolically as a, as a as a as a cross in the heart you know and um, but as soon as the heart lets go, I feel the vibration lifting. Um, so I'm I'm just incredibly grateful and to do this work and to hold space for human beings that want to be different. 
and and I feel like I'm the bridge between the human and the spiritual and and I love how um, th this has come to me and I know that in my life and I did a long long time I was just so angry and so resentful and so sad and by why did this happen to me like why have I gone through so much I now have come to realize in the last probably eight to ten years I've been working um, for 15 years doing this work that I love so much that it's happened for me and it was all part of what my soul had decided in this lifetime and I said with a big smile on my face but it's often hasn't been a happy space to be <laughs> so and just to realize that things you know challenges and things happen to us really for us because of the perspectives and what they can open up in our lives and take us that that's a huge huge thing isn't it it's massive and you sure. know i'm not sitting here for one moment saying i've got it all together i know it all um i still have egoic moments i had one yesterday where somebody hadn't acknowledged me and i, I said to my husband i just need to vent and and i was like i know this is ego but you know and that's a part of what i joke about because we can be as spiritual as we want but we're still here to be human yeah <laughs> and that's yes. the bridge <laughs> Yes. You know, um, often it's like, well, you know, I'm love and light. And I'm like, no, well, sometimes I was just human and I was freaking annoyed, man. Yes. And I wanted to show the bird or the middle finger to that person because I just was like annoyed. <laughs> it's just a part of us, you know, to to these different branches, these different areas, these different paths exactly. that we can be walking on at the moment. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and it is. I love how you said that. It's in the moment. So that's what I've come to learn over time is, you know, grieving is in the moment. Yes. Whether somebody lost somebody 20 years ago or three months ago, the grief is real in that moment, you know. And, um, and again, I just I say this as humbly as I possibly can, that there are so many people who are really saying, there's got to be something different. We want different, you know, and mm -hmm. and people are so brave and courageous. You know, we use the word encourage, but I spell it I N. And when we encourage, we have the courage to move forward. We have the courage to to excel. We have the courage to sometimes in my understanding of my world, like spiritual, like boom, shall OK, let's create another experience. And I was like, hey, la 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 la. <laughs> I'll just get on with life and they're like okay well we'll just have to make it bigger and eventually I said okay stop I've got it I've got the picture and um and some of us just need that wake-up call you know and it's not right or wrong and sometimes it takes us a little bit longer I've been told in readings that have that I've had that I'm a late bloomer and I most certainly am and 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 that's just okay you know we all learn at the pace that we learn and we all get the messages when we mean to get the messages yes and sometimes you know we can all benefit from you know being with someone or something helping us to make that little move to let go and move forward you know i'm gonna move on i'm gonna open this up in my life I'm going to move on that's it that's a huge thing when that door can be open isn't it absolutely and freedom yes and my understanding and sense is that we're always being guided and like as an example I don't know if you remember the chicken soup for the soul books oh yes yes okay now, I, I happen to, I think somebody gave one to me, and I can't remember which one it was, but I always, always, always remember this one story out of it, where this gentleman had a, had a restaurant and he had been shot, and um, he was in, he was being rushed into hospital, and he could hear them, he could hear all the paramedics and saying, he's dying, he's dying, and he said, it took everything inside of him to open up his eyes and say, I am not dying. I, you need to work on me as that I am alive. Like I can't remember his exact words because I was a teenager. And he then says, you know, everything is a choice. Everything is a choice in life. You know, you get up, we choose to brush our teeth. We choose to wash our hair. We choose to get dressed. We and I was like, wow. Now that was gifted to me. 
And I've just remembered that. Thank you. Because like, you know, it was one of the most special books that I'd ever, ever um, read. And you just have these moments where you go, aha, it's kind of like somebody gives you a book. And you're like, mm -mm, I don't want to read that because I don't think I'm really into empowerment or self-help or anything. It's like you buff it, you know, like, mm -mm, no, no. And, um, but yet spirits are giving you the gentle nudge. And I had that many times. <laughs> I was just like oblivious. Yes. yes. Uh. Yeah. And, and spirit can give us messages. It can give us signs, you know, something in a cloud and an animal or a feather. And I mean, so many messages, messages from loved ones or past pets. <laughs> I mean, so many things are out there. Share with everyone your website and a bit of, um, they can get on that, learn more about you and what they, they may, um, expect you know with setting up a a, a council with you and, and working with you what kind of doors it can that open for them okay thank you for asking um so my website's www.michellecarpenter it's double l e dot c o dot n z and at the moment um there's a mediumship which they can book in which is where i work with the grief and trauma and loved ones who passed over and sometimes spirit drop in randomly it might be an ancestor it might be somebody that they don't know or didn't know like a granny or grandfather and they're like i don't know how to answer it but they give the messages that are very much needed in this moment and they give the guidance and then i work a lot with music and um, sometimes even when spirit come through they'll want to play a song and I'll put a song on and somebody will go, oh my God, how did you know that? That's my wedding song. Um, so that's the mediumship. And we work a lot with uh, just helping the human body. I, I use breath and I'm just able to connect. I, I'm able to connect into the unconscious energy that perhaps for those of us who've lived in our heads for such a long time, don't even know that there's a connection into our body. So I'll just bring awareness and attention into the body for a person sitting opposite me. Then um, we have the Council of Eight um, sessions, which is where they come through the, these beautiful angelic beams of light and they have beautiful tonings. I kind of sound like an opera singer, Paula, like it amazes me what comes through this mouth. <laughs> um, but Michelle, the personality steps aside and they give us what we need to hear. They talk about Akashic records, uh, past lives. Uh, people come with questions, which are really, really beautiful. And, um, and then they work a lot with just the vibration of the human. And again, they, they share with us what we need to know, not what we want to know often. And uh, we have wonderful gatherings every Monday morning at 8 a.m. New Zealand daytime, uh, which is Sunday in the States and the rest of the world. And uh, it's an hour and a half. And they're such beautiful um, moments of community, you know. And I think a lot of us are searching, a lot of us that are that have perhaps felt alone on our journeys. And I most certainly have a lot of the times, um, like who do I turn to? Who can I speak to? You know, when we just, in, when I've been in a moment of, I don't understand what I'm seeing. I don't understand mm -hmm. what, what, you know, it, sometimes you just don't have that mentor or the teacher that's meant to be there because we've got to work it out ourselves. And, uh, and this community that we have is so loving and so kind and people just, just connect you know and and mm -hmm. and people come with yeah. questions and the council of eight again and normally as we know we're all one we're all in the connectedness of one so if there's one question be asked it's normally for everybody that's within the group so yeah. those are the sessions that i offer at the moment oh i love it i love it <laughs> with just a couple minutes left in the show michelle what last words do you want to share with everyone what would you like us to think about as we say goodbye Go into a space, and as I am, just putting your hands on your hearts. And for those of you who perhaps, you know, um, might not see this but might hear it, just put your hands on your heart and just feel your heart beating in this moment and say thank you. Thank you for the beat. Because every beat is different. Everybody's rhythm is different. Everybody's life story is different. And not one of us are the same. We, hence, we all have different thumbprints. And we're unique and we're all miracles. And that's just going back to a simple, simple exercise is placing your hands over your heart, taking a few big breaths, 
and thanking your heart for being here in this space. So oh. I hope that helps everybody. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. And isn't it a wonderful thing, Michelle, to celebrate how we are all each so unique? You know, uh, we're all beautiful. We are all love. And yeah. it's it's just a, a wonderful thing to celebrate that and, and celebrate the other beautiful beings we connect with. And yes, it yes. really... Yeah. Life it's is spectacular, isn't it? And it yeah. doesn't mean that we don't have the ups and downs. I most certainly have my ups and downs. I don't have all my, excuse my language, shit together. You know, I just don't. But that just makes me kind of go, okay, there's more. And yeah. yes, the, the beings are there to sometimes when I'm in an absolute discombobulated space, I'm like, okay, guys. You know, if I don't have bookings, I say, okay, guys, you know, my word for this year is trust. And be careful what you wish for. <laughs> trust and clarity. Okay. <laughs> Those are two very big, very big energetic words. <laughs> um, and and it's about trusting myself. That's what I'm coming to learn. It's about being clear in, in what it is for our, that I want. And then they deliver. You know, they're always showing up for us. And even in this connection with you, Paula, it's really, really fabulous. And uh, I have so much love for you, even though we've only met twice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. love to you as well. And, and it really is a beautiful thing you know, to trust and let go and just say yes, you know, yes. and open up to, you know, love and manifestations, opportunities, situations that can come into your life that you would never even have imagined. Yeah, you know? I love how you said that. Absolutely. When we say yes, the universe goes, okay. And it's just stepping out in courage, stepping yes. into the courage of who we actually are. You know, because if you look at it as a baby, a baby doesn't care when they cry. They don't care when they've got mm -hmm. a smelly nappy. They don't. Care. They just let it go. But yes, it's it's stepping out into that braveness of the yes, and the yes yeah. just gets easier and easier over time. Well, here is to stepping out yes. to that yes, <laughs> yes, everyone. All right, we're all stepping out. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much, Michelle. This has Thank been wonderful. And thank you for sharing your beautiful story. It's just... my pleasure, my honor, oh. and thank you for having me on it. I'm so great, grateful for the work that you present and show thank us and, um, and for the work that you are here on this planet Earth to so do. Grateful. So how cool is that? Thank you. So grateful. That. Love, hugs, and blessings. Everyone out there, love, hugs, and blessings. Thank you for joining us today. Bye.